Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do a first impressions review of Kringle Candle Company. Um, Kringle Candle, uh, as many of you know and are aware, has been around for quite some time. Uh, it was actually started in, I want to say around 2009 or so, by the son of the founder of Yankee Candle. So uh, Mike Kittredge founded Yankee Candle many, many, many decades ago. Um, that was sort of the original um, kind of mass market home fragrance candle that everyone you know is aware of and many people sort of either grew up on or started on or many of the early memories of home fragrance of candles when candles really became uh, a true way of layering scents within your home and bringing that that you know special vibe that that scent can bring to a home um, Yankee Candle was really at the forefront of that from um, you know the the large mass market companies um, that that do that and then uh, I believe they sold that off um, to you know to, to other corporations, larger businesses at some point. And then years later, uh, Mike's son Mick Kittredge um, started as just sort of, and I think an experiment. When I was doing a little bit of research on the website, um, sort, of, sort of an experiment um, in business school um, of what it could be like to launch a candle company. You know, learning from from what his father did with Yankee Candle, um, and he actually turned it into, alongside with his father, into its own brand, its own business um, called Kringle Candle Company. Um, and from there, the idea. Was they what's interesting from what I've known now? There are many in depth, um, you know, uh, reviews and you know, history um, and behind the scenes knowledge of Kringle Candle Company. Um, I know that Philly Candleman actually did a, a really in depth interview with Mick uh, a few months back, learning a lot about the history of the company and you know, the, the science behind it and just their perspective and their kind of vision for what they want Kringle Candle Company to become. Um, so you can check that out again because I'm a newbie to it. The reason why I'm getting into this is, uh, you know, relaunching Touch Fire twice now, you know, started back in 2012 and then came back just recently in the past couple of months and really wanting to diversify the the brands that I review and that I explore for myself and for, for my viewers um, beyond, you know, the, the couple of brands I started with. Um, you know, I did when I did the channel for so many years, it was almost entirely Bath & Body Works, a little bit of, you know, one-off things here and there. Um, but really, you know, I've now dug into Boy Smells and obviously Homeworks is a big part of what I burn now. and of course, still Bath & Body Works. Looked at Lafco, uh, you know, really excited about digging into them, some of the higher end fragrances. Certainly I'll get into Nest sometime soon um, and Slack & Co when, when Harry relaunches, whatever that line will be, which is super exciting. Um, but knowing that there's so many fans out there of Kringle Candle, I wanted to you know, kind of see what the fuss was about and see what I thought about it. Um, and so knowing that kind of they are towing the line between sort of classic um, you know, the Yankee Candle style of candle, the paraffin wax colored in, in you know, the traditional vessel that we're familiar with in Yankee Candle um, with those types of scents, but also getting a little bit more modern um, into you know, two wick jars, more contemporary design, all white wax, um, soy blend versus just your um, traditional you know, Yankee style paraffin, and really kind of go pulling some of the, the you know, let's say the, the fragrance of the 80s and 90s styles more into you know, current, um, a little bit more contemporary modern times as far as branding and um, things that we've learned with candles and, you know, how to make them better and stronger over the years from, you know, 30, 40 plus years ago. Um, and what so what I wanted to do is just kind of see, okay, what are the scents like? And I haven't really um, spent time in any stores where I've been able to get, a, you know, my nose on, on a lot of the scents. So what they did, um, they actually had um, a really great uh, sort of post-holiday sale. So I placed an order, it was early January, it took three or four weeks to get here um, as the world is, you know, dealing with, with shipping delays and supply chain and, um, you know, just having issues and getting products out. Took, some, took a while to get here, um, but I did a purchase of, I did one full candle and then I did 11 of their daylights. Now daylight, again, I love when companies do this. It is a way, this is, they say, I think about double the size of a tea light. So it is um, 1.5 ounces, 42 grams, up to 12 hour burn, just in sort of a solid plastic vessel with just little feet there. So it's not gonna, you know, it's gonna be a little bit off of whatever surface you burn it on. Um, it has the branding of the candle uh, that you would get if you were to, get a, a full size candle um, with just your single wick in here. This looks to be probably a paraffin or maybe a paraffin blend. Could see a little bit of vegetable or soil, soy potentially in there as well. Um, but really the idea is to get a sense of the scent. Maybe for traveling or something, you could burn these if, they're, you know, if they've got a good enough throw for you. Um, but primarily it was, okay, I don't wanna spend 20, 30 plus dollars on the candle if I don't know the scent. Um, and I wanna get an overall view of the types of scents and the blends that Kringle Candle does, as well as Country Candle, which we'll get into in a second. 
Um, so I did this purchase of 11 uh, of the Daylights. Really great deal. I think some of them were like, they're usually $3.50, I want to say, and I think I paid a dollar or two for many of these on their post-holiday sale. So many of these scents, for the most part, actually are sort of winter or holiday scents, but knowing that any candle company that does seasonal that's worth its salt is going to have really great holiday scents. And so I wanted to dive in. I didn't look at this as, okay, what do the reviewers say the top scents are? What does Kringle say the top scents are? I went through and said, okay, what's available? What are notes or scents that I'm intrigued by? Well, let me get it. Let me sniff them and see. I know I'll love some. I know I'll hate some. That's fine. That's the idea of the daylight is just getting this sample size um, of the scent. So I have, again, mostly in Kringle Candle, and then a handful in Country Candle, which to my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, any fans out there, Country Candle is more the Yankee-style interpretation, so the colored wax, the paraffin, the traditional vessels, the traditional jars. Kringle Candle is the more contemporary uh, in either, I think sometimes paraffin, but also soy blend wax, um, either in a two-wick contemporary jar or also now in sort of three-wick, kind of BBW-inspired three-wick vessels, um, and also soy blend. Uh, and so that's kind of where there's two lines, but from what I can understand, it looks like sometimes the fragrances do actually mix over them. At first I thought it was, oh, the more traditional conceptual blends of the Yankee style, because Yankee is a very specific style of scent in my opinion, um, would be in Country Candle and then more contemporary blends would be in Kringle. I don't know if it's exactly true because at least a couple of these I saw available in Country Candle Packaging and Kringle Candle Packaging. So anyone out there, correct me, let me know uh, where I'm off there. Um, and when I say Yankee has like a very specific style, it's almost like, you know, if you smell a Bath & Body Works signature collection in their body care, whether you know it's from them or not, if it, you know, one of the scents that you know and have loved for years, when you sniff it, there's, it's got some sort of vibe or the way the fragrance is built that is very specific to Yankee, I think, or excuse me, to Bath & Body Works. Yankee Candle is the same way where the blend, the way they do a lot of conceptual, very, uh, sometimes heavily blended, very classic, not much of a contemporary, you know, fresh edge to it. It's very classic and what people, you know, who, want that want and love that brand what they're expecting from it um so i was expecting some of that in that in this and i got some of that but also a little bit of different things so let's just dive right in i'm going to read you the notes what they have on the website and you can also see here i'll put the notes so you understand what you're seeing what what i'm smelling um and then we'll take it from there so first up is juniper and laurel notes laurel leaves eucalyptus white juniper jasmine silver spruce patchouli cedar and pine cone now this right up my alley again going off of the notes and the the visual there this is very nice. You've got greenery, 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 winter, 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 all this pine, so much pine when you think of the juniper and the spruce and the cedar and the pine cone, which is probably just your typical evergreen, you know, your conifer. This is great. This reminds me a little bit of maybe Yankee, is it mistletoe perhaps? There are many scents like this that are just, you know, names of, of greenery um, at Yankee um, that they're similar in execution to this but you definitely get that sort of softness from the laurel and the eucalyptus, almost like a bayberry in a sense too. Soft, powdery. The silver spruce is in there, but it's not too intense. Sometimes silver spruce can just be a little too astringent. And the patchouli is mild. It's just enough to make it a little bit earthy, cool off, make it less than, or than just the greenery. I really like that. That's a great one to start with. And then we move on to cranberry. Um, I'm not sure what the Mary is from. Is that like Virgin Mary or is it, I don't know where the, where the Mary part came from. Uh, notes are juicy orange, bright raspberry, sparkling cranberry, frosted juniper berry, sugar pine, sweet vanilla bean. At first I liked this, then I didn't, then I did, then I didn't. I'm torn on this one. I think I'd have to burn it. I like the cranberry is there. I actually do get the raspberry, which is weird to me. I could do without that. It does have that very tangy, but like bright red raspberry in there. Funny when they say bright raspberry. And the juniper is a little bit in there. Not a ton of juniper. I could use a little bit more, but I don't know if this is going for gourmand or conceptual. What I give it a lot of is the sugared pine and sweet vanilla bean, and it is very vanilla bean and like the sugar crystals. The sugared pine, I don't know if that works for me. It's a little bit cloying and just like perfumey almost. Um, and it reminds me a little bit of, of the Yankee Candle sugared apple, um, which was sort of a holiday scent. I don't know if it had sugared pine or not, but there's sort of that outdoorsy, sugary, but in a like resinous, almost non-edible way. So part of me likes this, but part of me, I don't know. that The, the sweetness mixed with the freshness of the cranberry, I'm not entirely sure about that one. 
Then we move on to Aurum and Evergreen. Aurum, I believe, is the Latin word for gold, so green and evergreen, or gold and evergreen, excuse me. T uh, sparkling pink grapefruit, green apple peel, Valencia orange, pomegranate juice, cinnamon leaf, strawberry jam, sugar crystals, vanilla snow, and Siberian fir. Interesting. Very, very conceptual. I like this. It's not something that I would, it's, um, because it has so much going on, it's hard for me to catch the vibe of, oh, does it, does it feel like a, you know, a, a, a cool, brisk day it's taking you to? Or is it, you're inside at a, a holiday party and there's cider going and the tree is there and there's some sort of fresh fruit? Uh, I don't really know what it is, which the name and the image don't evoke anything other than this is holiday. I think what is t turning me off maybe is the strawberry jam in there. You've again, you've got sugar crystals, vanilla snow, so you've got like a sweetness to the pine that it, I don't love that sweetness to the pine. And then the fruits are bright and fresh. This kind of reminds me of like a vendor wax interpretation. Not loving it. Not hating it. If, if I wouldn't, don't know that I would buy this to burn for myself, but if I, if I went in someone's house, I'd be like, oh, that smells nice, what is that? Without necessarily saying to myself, oh, I love that, I need that, if that makes any sense. There's just a lot going on. Grapefruit, green apple peel, orange, pomegranate, strawberry, cinnamon. It's just, it kind of doesn't know what it wants to be, in my opinion. Uh, very complex though. And I could see someone smelling it and being reminded of something in the past and loving it, so no hate given. Um, then we've got Snowy Bridge, which I think uh, Melanie, uh, I think she called this one of her favorites from last year, Mr. Kong's mom. Um, notes on this one, bright citron, frosted fir, juniper glitter, Midnight Skies, Jasmine, which I don't expect to see in a holiday scent, but interesting. Silver Spruce, Vanilla, Crystal, and Patchouli Kiss. All right, let's be, what does that mean? Does it mean a little hint of patchouli? Oh, this is, I like this one. The patchouli is, it's like a sheer patchouli or something. Cause it's really in there, but it's like they cut patchouli in half and they took out like half of the, like the sharp astringency notes to put in here and like left some of the earthiness behind. Certainly a little bit of juniper, a little bit of the spruce. Again, a lot of use of spruce. I'm not the biggest fan of spruce. Many people are not. I'm okay with it. I would have to like this one, but I'm getting more of the floral than I expected. Again, this one is hard. This one doesn't have a strong identity for me. Some of these it's hard to place other than calling out like, okay, I see some a winter note in it. There's so much complexity going on, which often is a good thing, but there's so much complexity going on that it's hard for me to place the vibe. Like I don't envy the marketing team unless they're just throwing spaghetti at the wall, I don't know, but like calling a snowy bridge and finding the right imagery for it is to me is difficult. Um, and I'm not sure if they start with the blend and then market it, or they say, we want something that evokes a snowy bridge, let's let's build it. Um, again, I just don't know enough about the brand to, to know their behind the scenes process. Interesting, but again, I'd say that the, the patchouli is very strong in that one. Then we go to Tinsel Time, T-H-Y-M-E, Tinsel Time. Um, holly greens, citrus, pomegranate, holly berry, thyme, white birch, bir balsam fir, and musk. This is interesting. Uh, again, these, I really go back and forth on these, like between loving them and, and I don't wanna say hating them, but like just being like, oh, that is not a blend for me. And that's one thing I wanna say is, though, you know, many of these are not must haves for me after smelling them, uh, any brand that makes, you know, 20, 40, 60, 100, 200 cents, they're gonna have tons that aren't for everybody and some that are like, oh, I need that in my house at all times, right? And so it's about finding the right one for you because obviously there are many fans of, of Crinkle Candle and, and they seem to have uh, a lot of de dedication behind the brand. Clearly, um, it's a family passion in the Kittredge family. So still very much open to finding something that fits my, my vibe and what I'm looking for. Tinsel Time is, I would say there's, there's almost something in here that is, um, this is gonna sound a little bit weird, but almost like a bug spray and not to diminish this to just say, oh, it smells like bug spray. It doesn't smell like bug spray, but there's something, I don't know if it's something with like the citrus mixed with the herbal of the thyme and whatever the musk is, or even just like the white birch, which can be kind of like, um, almost like winter berry kind of strong. <clears throat> I like the idea of this. Uh, it's what, there's one or two notes off for me that I would like to tweak. But overall, I'd say this is an, an upper couple that I've smelled as far as the, you know, the juniper and laurel and this one, very different because your juniper and laurel is softer, a little bit sweeter, very traditionally green. And Tinsel Time has that edge. 
I will say that the thing is with with this brand and brands like this is I do wish there was more. I'm very much I do love um, getting imagery to just kind of in addition to the name and the notes to tell me what to expect. With this, I will say like Tinsel Time and uh, the next one I'll be doing in the, in this group, Christmas is here, Bohemian Holiday, um, Aram and Evergreen. They're they're just random. I, I don't know if it's stock footage or they very well may have created the, the imagery themselves, but it's just like decorations um, from a Christmas tree. I want a little bit more of that um, to really transport me and, and, you know, really, it is marketing, of course, but it influences what you're expecting the smell to be. So it's a little tricky when it's just sort of a silver ball to know what it's, what I should expect from it. But interesting, Tinsel Time is, is definitely one to, to watch for me. And then I've got, I think the only gourmand, Christmas cookie dough. And I grabbed that one because, you know, every candle brand in this sort of a style and demographic is gonna have cookie dough or Christmas cookie dough or home fresh baked cookies or, or you know, Santa's cookies, cookie, 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 which is fine. There's, if they're good, they're good. This is very traditional. So vanilla, butter, brown sugar, vanilla, and cream. Okay, that's cookie, that makes sense. And it's not your uh, chocolate chip cookie. It really is like a, a cookie dough. Now for me, Christmas cookie dough, okay, maybe it's like the cutout cookies, right? But if you really wanted to make it Christmassy, I would add just a little bit of nutmeg to it or a little bit of Christmas warm spice, maybe some cinnamon or something. Um, but still, it's cookie dough. This could be a year-round cookie dough. And it's authentic. It's not, it reminds me a lot of like the Bath and Body Works Merry Cookie, where it's a little bit buttery, but it's not baked. It's very much the dough. So it's not like a, a buttery, crisp, you know, shortbread or or a cookie that is is that sort of like baked good. It doesn't smell like a bakery. It smells like the sweetness and a lot of that vanilla bean of a cookie dough that's like freshly going in your KitchenAid. So really nice as far as that goes. Uh, good interpretation of, of cookie dough. Then we move to the final one from this one, iced citrus. Cool peppermint, lemon, frosted fir, grapefruit, verbena root, sugarcane, vanilla, and crushed mint leaves all over the place. Could be just a year round scent, um, I, not necessarily holiday. The citrus um, is heavily citrus, though making it iced, putting in your, you know, your a little bit of fur, a little bit of that peppermint, um, the mint leaves um, is gonna cool it off a bit and make it an iced citrus. Really nice. This might be my favorite so far. This is very reminiscent of uh, Lemon Mint Leaf from Slack & Co, Bath & Body Works, where you had that verbena, you have a lot of citrus, you got the sweetness and sugar crystals in there, the sugar cane in this, this instance, mixed with citrus and mint, and that frosted fur, ever so mild, but just enough to, to pull it together to be not necessarily holiday, but winter, you know, January, February citrus season. So I really like it. There's like a powdered sugar, like glaze on top of this for me. Also reminds me a bit of the Homeworks Citrus Garden Mint from I think maybe the first year, the first spring collection or, or within the first year or two, which also reminded me a bit of that lemon mint leaf. So again, really love it. I would never say no to this. This one smells fresh, clean, but not summery juicy, which I love a citrus that can be, you know, appropriate for this time of year without being too tropical. So that is a major hit for me, loving that one. Then we go on to the last couple here, uh, which are the country candle versions. First up, frosty branches, bergamot, grapefruit, galbanum. Now this, the notes on this, I will call it, it says bergamot, comma, green, comma, grapefruit. So green is that, I don't know if that they're just trying to have us visualize the color with fragrance, which that's fine, but that's not a note. And then mid says floral and green. What florals? There's daisies and mums and many things in the picture. And then bottom notes, peach, cedarwood, orange, blossom, and moss. Um, what kind of blossom? Is it orange blossom? I don't know if those are just like mistakes with the commas or if they're supposed to be different notes, but that makes it a little confusing for me. And galbanum, uh, I, not many people are familiar with it. I actually had to look it up myself. Uh, is a gum-like resin obtained from the stems of a plant. Um, and it's often said that it smells spicy, green, bitter, aromatic, deep and resinous. And I get that, like very, very intense. This one's not for me because uh, frosty branches, I don't really get from this. And if you're throwing an orange and peach and grapefruit and flowers, where are the branches and, and where's the frost? I just don't get it. I get a lot of like a very intense powdery floral that just like hits you in the nose, almost like a floral, you know, cherry blossom perfume, although cherry blossoms don't have really much of a scent of it on their own. I don't, I don't like that one. That is one that I actively will say I don't like. No hate to anyone who does, but I don't like that. 
Uh, Christmas is here. Very traditional tangerine petty grain, which if you remember watching one of my videos um, on LAFCO, petty grain is stems and leaves from the bitter orange tree. Um, citron, lavender, cassis root, eucalyptus, cedarwood, balsam fir, and amber. So across the board, I'm expecting this is that Christmas where you're in the you're in the room. It's the traditional Christmas, so you've got that citrus, maybe a little bit either pomander or just citrus and cloves simmering on the stove, just to scent the potpourri of the room with your Christmas tree there, um, and then some additional layers within it. And this is pretty nice. Um, it's not overwhelming on the citrus. It's a it's a the citrus it really is almost like a, the peels, and it's almost like cooked in a way, but not like a jam. It really is kind of like the peels simmering. Mm -hmm. Don't pick out the lavender specifically. Eucalyptus may be a tiny bit of soft, non-astringent eucalyptus. The cedarwood, the fir, the amber. I'm glad the amber is not, amber can be thick, heavy, almost musky, um, resinous, dark, drippy, overwhelming. It's not here, it's really lightly balanced. This is a very balanced blend. Um, I like it. It's not a, it's not an immediate must have the way that sometimes, you know, when I think of this type of blend is very traditionally Yankee in my mind, like uh, you don't get many of these kind of blends from say like Bath and Body Works, for instance. Um, I think there are probably some that I'm familiar with already, names escape me, but from Yankee um, that are similar in execution to this that I like more than this one. But I appreciate it because it's definitely, it's a, it's a bit fresh without being over, knock you over the head with fresh brightness. And a little bit soft. I think it works. That's interesting. I'd be interested to see that one burning, actually. Then we go to Golden Tobacco. I tried this one because I wanted to see, okay, when they go into like conceptuals or like the heavy, more masculine, colony, quote unquote colony sense, what does that look like? Notes cedarwood, cypress, pepper, amber, uh, olibanum, sandalwood, tobacco, leather, suede, and sweet incense. Boom, boom, boom. Hitch, hitch, hitch it. And, and I believe, um, Olibanum, or ol I think that's how you say it, olibanum, uh, is I believe another word for frankincense or a derivative of frankincense. Uh, this is, when you think of a tobacco leaf, sort of that heavy, but a little bit warm, round, kind of like a cedarish, which is also in here, uh, like mm, almost musky, not sharp, like a soft musk um, tobacco that you often get in home fragrance. This hits that for me. It's a little over the top though, with also putting in leather, suede, incense, amber, sandalwood, cypress. That's a lot that are very similar to me, like resinous woods. Um, I'd like a little bit more from the pepper there, maybe something to brighten it up. Um, that's not just all, you know, woods and trees and resins. Um, the incense is there more than I expect. I think that's where some of the sweetness comes from with tobacco. It's just a little bit too much for me. And I like heavy scents, I like conceptual scents, but this one is just not, it's too imbalanced, too much of that stuff for me without bringing something else to go, ooh, what is that? You know, think of Harry Slacken when he has his florals, there's a little, oftentimes a little bit of fruit in there. There's something that is intriguingly different. Um, and this one is just kind of straightforward. I, it doesn't feel, Though it is un maybe unique, it doesn't feel unique in execution to me. Um, then we go to, is this the last one? Yes, Bohemian Holiday. Notes orange, fir needle, cypress, raspberry, another raspberry for the holidays. Cedarwood, sandalwood, tonka bean, and vanilla sugar. Vanilla sugar, tonka bean, I don't, going in, I'm like, I don't know if I like this, but let me try it because it sounds interesting. Mm, it's just a little, It's a. this is a little scatterbrained for me, this one. I don't know if I like it. Like the rat, there's definitely, I'm getting the mid, the, I'm definitely getting the raspberry in there, but raspberry and like the depth of tonka bean and cedarwood and sandalwood mm, doesn't really work for me. Like cypress, cedarwood and sandalwood, like pick one or two, but like they're throwing these like deep, traditionally like more deep, heavy bass notes into like a top and mid. And it just isn't fully working for me. Get a little bit of citrus from that orange, definitely the raspberry, but then a lot of heavy, heavy depth, but not, doesn't it scream pine or holiday to me. Um, the tonka bean as well, and the vanilla sugar. I don't need the sweetness of the sugar in this. The sweetness from the orange or raspberry would be enough. 
it's just a little bit too weird for me. Again, people may love it. But so for me, I'd say, honestly, a bit of a mixed bag um, of these scents. There's one more I will, I will get into in a second, though, that I, that I do want to talk about, which is time, because I'm intrigued by this collection. Um, for me, certainly the Ice Citrus, really, really nice. The Juniper and Laurel, really, really nice. Snowy Bridge. You know what this actually reminds me of now that I sniff it again is I had a wood burning kit as a kid where it's like, you know, like that, I don't know, that, that tool where it gets like the tip is metal and it's hot and you like put it into like some balsa wood or some cedar wood and it just burns and smells like burning wood. Whatever wood that was, it smells just like this, which is crazy to me. Yeah, Snowy Bridge smells like a, uh, a wood burning kit as, as a kid, so that's funny. Um, the Orem and Evergreen, I can see that one. The others... Cookie dough, fine, but don't need it. The others are are not really my bag for conceptual, I would say. Um, acceptable, there's only one or two that I like, don't, I dislike, the rest are inoffensive to me, but I would say probably the Juniper Laurel, Ice Citrus, and maybe the Aurum Evergreen are three that I'd be interested in. Um, so again, mixed bag, but still fun to sniff and to see what is out there and see what they have. Final one I'm doing, Time. This is, I, I don't know this collection is discontinued. This was at a heavy discount. I only see a few of these on the website. I think there were originally eight to, or 10. I know that Queen of the Girl Geeks got all of them and talked about them. Cinnamon, oregano, uh, bay leaf, thyme, rosemary. I went for thyme because I've never seen a straight up thyme candle in, in anything before. And it's pretty spot on. I, I feel like there's a little bit of like oregano in there maybe or a little something else too. I may actually do another video just on this after I burn it and actually having some spices to like do straight up sniff comparisons. Um, but certainly very authentic, what you'd hope to expect from an herbal candle or a spice candle. Um, they're not playing games and putting a bunch of crazy stuff in there to make it conceptual. It's more authentic to the name, which is kind of cool. Um, and a nice kind of chrome um, hammered lid, very reminiscent of BBW. It almost makes you wonder if they have some of the same suppliers for their materials because this really looks like straight up uh, Bath & Body Works dupe um, in that way. And it is a 14 ounce versus 14.5 ounce uh, of wax. And this one I think is a soy blend. So long video, thank you for sticking with me on it. Let me know what you think of Pringle Candle. What, you know, of these scents, tell me like, is it like, oh yeah, you, the, everyone loves the ones you love or yeah, no one really knows why they make Frosted Branch. Like, whatever your opinions are, if there are any, you know, crinkle candle aficionados out there, let me know what you think. Um, what scents you think now that I've sort of given an initial overview, first impression for myself, uh, what scents are ones that I definitely need to dig into if you're familiar with sort of the things I like um, that I should give a shot, give a try to. Let me know. Uh, and that's the next time, guys. Take care.